We're talking hockey. No AQ Shipley talking hockey. The Bolts and the Habs. Wow. Finals prediction Come in the on, intro. You song? Habs. Hello and welcome to That's so Hockey Talk. I am your host, Nick Marotta. That beautiful voice you just heard, our pal of the pals, our friend from north of the border, at Bubba Gumpino Gumpy. You have to be just ecstatic right now. You've got the English side in the Euros and footy. You've got uh, Les Habitants, the Montreal Canadiens, defying all the odds and all the critics. They just keep winning. Need game six. Can't go back to Vegas. You can't. I, I had a feeling the nights are done. You think? I think that, that uh, performance they put on the other night, uh, the Habs just shelled them. Didn't look like Vegas was really like in that game much at all. Even with a late push, they get the one goal late in the third period, and it still just felt like the Montreal's forecheck and everything, the speed yeah. and the talent with the young guys, Suzuki, uh, Kakatiemi, Kakatiemi. I still can't say his name. Do you think they're gassed from the Colorado series? And Cole Caulfield, not to mention. No, I don't think they're gassed. I think it's just just the uh, way Montreal is playing. I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's a lot. I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves internally. Yeah. Um. And then the goaltending situation is interesting because Flurry, you know, I'm not gonna say he's faltered, but he hasn't been as sharp. And Leonard comes in, and and, and basically, you could say Leonard stole that game, yeah. and then. They turn away from him and go back to Flurry, and then the whole team in front of him kind of has a little bit of a letdown. He gets lit up again. Now do they go back to Leonard? You'd have to think, right? The, the way DeBoer is, that's what I'm leaning. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I'd be surprised if they stuck with Flurry. Um, I was thinking, do you think they went away from Mark after that gaff to kind of give him some time to rebuild his confidence, and so he didn't have to go in there in Montreal? See, I thought for sure they would have just road with Leonard again I didn't think they would me too after how good he looked I think he, especially in the playoffs we've seen it a million times yeah, I don't understand if it. a goalie gets hot Ride hot hands you go and then if he screws up if he screwed up game five then you come back with Mark game six right but now you're in the opposite now you're going to go Leonard I imagine game six I would have to think so we, we've we've talked about it before the Boers tendency to uh, kind of shoehorn Leonard in, yeah. so we're both surprised that he didn't do that already. But now I think it makes a lot more sense to go back. Kind of like, kind of jumps the team, gives him a little bit of a, a shot in the arm, a little wake up call. Hey, hey, it's, it's winter, go home now, boys. So figure it out because they're not getting any help from their forwards. Stone has, I don't think he has a point in the series. No, and he he doesn't look like a threat much on the ice. He's involved. Like I'm not, you, you can't question his effort because he's in there. But like he's not producing. They, they're only getting their offense from the back end. The guys up front aren't getting it done. Pacioretty finally got on the board the other night. But like when you look at that and compare to what Montreal's able to do, yeah. Cole Caulfield's got three goals. He looks like he's ready to shoot the puck as soon as it gets on his stick. He, he's got that sniper mentality. Uh, the young guy, Suzuki, he's, he's a force all over the ice, a playmaker. And then you look at like what Montreal's done on the back end. Yeah. They're not getting a ton of juice offensively from their back end, but they got Edmondson stepping up and laying some big hits. Shea Weber is like a consummate physical force and just playing great two-way hockey. And then they got Petri back after the uh, eyeball situation and his fingers, and he looks like better than ever. He lo- this is probably the best hockey Jeff Petri's played in his career this past two years. I think you'd say that about Weber, too. I mean, Weber looks like he did when he was in Nashville. Yeah, he's, like not, he he's is, not like bombing the puck no, the same way. No, but he is way, a but... fucking general out there, man. Yeah. Like when he's on the ice, I mean, it's it. I know it's kind of boring to watch. I, I get it. But like to see a guy like him kind of take over like he used to and ha- take a team on a run has been awesome to watch for me anyways. And that's like, even when you look at, so we talk about Montreal's young guys here, but even when you look at the quote unquote old guys on the team, like Perry, Stahl, Stahl yep. and that you could even include Toffoli, I think he's 29, and Josh Anderson is, is in his late 20s now, like they don't look slow at all either. They look like they got tons of legs. And you know, Perry doesn't have what he once had, but he's still finding a way to play a role in in other areas of the ice, being down low or being gritty, doing that pest thing again. And he's not like a distraction. Yeah, everything he does now, which may have been once looked at as a distraction, now it's like, oh, this guy's a leader. He's, he's, fa- he's coming back to the ice ball bloody after that. Uh, after he got the stick to the face, yeah. and then they score the OT goal, and he, that scene just looks so awesome when he's like he's making that feel like we won 
we want oh shit here we go boys and then what can you say about Carey price i mean you've been banging the drum for him tooting his tooting his horn the whole time and he showed up you know yeah. he had that one little squeaker that where was, he let in see that's the thing like this series could be over yeah. you know what i mean like that was to see that go in against him i mean you're gonna have those it happens to everybody that but they dominated that game too it, I think uh, my favorite underrated storyline out of this whole thing, we were chirping with uh, Marenzi on Twitter about yeah. this, is Celine Dion showing up on the screen, <laughs> oh, yeah. pulling for the Golden Knights. <laughs> is Celine Dion, obviously a big-time French-Canadian, yeah. Montreal native, I believe. Yeah. So apparently, she wanted to buy the team years ago, yeah. and they shut her out, and they said no, and now she just holds a grudge and hates the team. Yeah. I love that move. It's the best. <laughs> I absolutely love it. But, yeah, I mean, Carey Price just keeps, keeps motoring along, man. I mean, it's, it's special to watch. Let's uh, let's switch gears and jump over to the other series because I I am really disappointed Vegas isn't isn't showing more of a fight here and it looks like they're done and but I will say it is kind of nice to see Montreal back in the big picture they're like they're like hockey royalty even though they haven't won or been involved in so long they like they are the historic franchise in the league they but are even when even when Vegas made it three one last night like that lead still didn't feel safe. Like when Vegas See, to gets, me it did really I, like, and only because I'm just thinking initially, that way because I'm you know yeah that you always feel like your team's gonna let you down exactly yeah. initially I had the same thoughts just, okay Vegas can make this a game yeah. come back maybe force OT but after like a cup after like a minute or two after that goal they had a chance or two and then it kind of died down because Montreal didn't stop four checking yeah. they kept four checking they kept bringing the pressure a lot of teams try and sit back and sit on that lead yeah. You can't do that in today's NHL. You got to keep playing your game because if you if you get one more, then you know you're safe. But uh, you're not going to be able. The way the teams are built now, and the way the game is called, especially officiating, that's something else we haven't really touched on uh, after that disaster in, in Game Four. Yeah. But I mean, I felt like the officials were better in Game Five. But it's it's been a tough go. But I didn't realize this. I guess uh, uh, Kelly Sutherland, I believe, is out with an injury. Yeah, and Wes McCauley is out with an injury. So Ooh. those are like two big time very big NHL refs that people know and you know those household names typically in officiating if you know a ref's name it's a bad thing. Yeah. These guys you know their names because they are considered to be some of the better refs in the game. Uh they're out with injury. So now we got guys who haven't called that many playoff games especially this late in the game. Yeah. Uh and now they're doing and they're just, you know, they're probably not qualified or not supposed to be out there just haven't but been to the dance before exactly and yep. you're trying to make do with it and it's fast game and all that and i'm not going to stick up for these guys because they they make money whatever yep. they, they they could be accountable they can answer questions i think they should after games have to answer questions but they don't regardless that's a whole nother wormhole we're not getting into we don't cry about the refs here nah. no yeah we play through it not not right now anyways. no we'll but there's a, there's a lot of that going on <laughs> yeah. online people are not happy i mean with i the, get with the I, I get the it you know people being upset about it and stuff but like the whole it's rigged thing like i just don't i don't buy into it no i don't either you know what i mean i think uh we talked about enough on this show in the past that the nhl is inept in a lot of ways yeah and for them to be able to even pull off something yeah. like rigging games and having certain teams play, i don't give them enough credit no. to be able to do that Not a chance uh Boy, the uh, Tampa Bay, let's get in, over into the other series. The Tampa Bay Islanders um, situation here, uh, it, they're going it tonight. Yep. This will, this show will be out probably as that game's going on. YouTube version will be out the following morning. What do we think is going to happen? I'm on the ilk. I think Tampa's going to get this done. We talked about on Hammer Down. I think it's going to be cagey, but I think Tampa's going to eke it out and end the series tonight, and they're going back to the final to yeah, defend you, the cup. you got to believe it's time that the Islanders are done. But then again, it's like every time we say this, they just come back and fucking one last time. But, like, you lose 8 nothing. I mean, it just feels like... But in this series, even if the Islanders win tonight, I still think it goes back to Tampa, and Tampa wins Game 7. And yeah, I would you know not what bet I mean? against Tampa like, at like, home in a game seven. I think either way, Tampa Bay is getting to the final at this point. Do you feel like, and maybe it's because of the regular season and the different shift in the conference and the no fans, like, does it feel like this Tampa team's like underappreciated? Yeah, but it felt like that all year. Yeah. So Tampa, when Tampa Bay got knocked out in the first round, remember when they Columbus. were an absolute wagon? Yeah. That's when it felt like everyone was like, okay, this Tampa team... And then after that happened, oh, ever, they can't win. Ever They're since chokers, that, yeah. it's felt like nobody gives a shit. And like, 
they, I mean, not to go back to it, but all those players that weren't playing, I mean, they come back and they're, they're just the exact same team they were. Like, they've been better in the playoffs than they were all year because they had a full squad. So it's like, they're not going to get the respect they deserve just because I, I really don't know why, but they should. Cause um, I mean, I'm looking right now at the playoff point leaders. Yeah. Kucherov, 27. Yeah. Braden Point, 18. <laughs> Stamco, 17. Yeah. Hedman, 16. Kalorn, 16. I'm not reading the Tampa Bay point leaders. I'm reading the entire yeah. postseason point leaders. The next, then you get McKinnon, Pasternak at 15. Then you finally get to a, a Montreal Canadian with Tyler Toffoli with 14. There so, we go. like the the ability to dominate and not just with one or two guys. Like it, it's the known guys, right? It's the known players that get you to the dance. But Kucherov, Point, Stamkos, Hedman, Kalorn, like. They got it spread out. Yeah. They're not relying on one or two guys. They got four or five guys. And that's to go without saying, like, McDonough, who's not really known to chip in offensively yeah. but play that steady two-way game. He has that backhand the other night, that spinorama move, yeah. that's going in if Pulak doesn't slide yeah, in there and make that brilliant save. play. Um, and the the Islanders, Lou Lamorello, wins the GM of the Year award, which I, I think a lot of people weren't really happy about. But I I get it. The team makes a run. Yeah. They're this deep into the, into their a game or two away from the Stanley Cup final with a roster that says this team should be nowhere near a Stanley yeah. Cup final. So you give them a lot of credit. And then the trade he made at the the deadline, getting Kyle Palmieri and Travis Zajac, two guys that played a big role in these playoffs, like that basically was a catalyst for the Islanders because they struggled to score in the regular season. And Paul Mary has put in a, a bunch of key goals in the playoffs. Um, not as many as Braden Point, though. Braden yeah. Point's got 13. You got to give Barry Trotz his respect, though, man. Like, what this guy does with teams. Like, he won a cup with the Capitals when yep. nobody else could. Then he comes to this team. He's got them on a hell of a run. Like... The way he puts his, he implements his system and what he does with teams he coaches is nothing short of incredible. Uh, which brings me back to something I wanted to talk about earlier when we were talking about referees and officiating. The Matthew Barzell thing when he kind of, yeah. he he had enough and he saw his guy getting punked in front of the net by Jan Ruta. Then he follows Ruta up the ice, he gives him the, the cross check and he gives him the second one and he gets a five and a misconduct and then he gets fined and people were talking about should he be suspended. Didn't think you should be suspended. No. I thought the five in a game was more than enough. I would have been fine with a two-minute major. Now, granted, he hurt Ruta, and Ruta was down the ice. But, like, felt like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but to me, it felt like he hit him once in the arm, and the second time, he just meant to hit him again. Yeah. But he was a little high with it. I don't think he was going to hit him. Like, no. I don't think he was trying to rearrange his teeth. I think he just, like... I think Ruta ducked down a little yeah. bit, glanced off of the shoulder, hit him right in the mouth. Like I, I'm not going to call Barzell a dirty player for no. that, like that heat of the moment yeah. playoff battle type thing. There's no need for a suspension there. I mean, especially in this far along. I mean, there. I just it wouldn't have been a a good look. Well, uh, not a lot of things they've done recently have been good looks. Yeah. Like the whole. Uh, let's just talk about the fishing because the whole like I see a lot of people like this is an embarrassment to the league. Like they. Uh, what when are we going to realize like this is the way it is yeah. it's the way it always has been this happens every year yeah. where there's one or two series where stuff gets a little chippy or not even necessarily because like i feel like montreal vegas hasn't been Nothing aggressive just the classic fucking dust ups in front of the net that happen in every series it's right? always the um the everyone wants consistency yeah but that's impossible to do because you're not assigning a group of referees to work an entire series it's like asking every team to play the same yeah, how right. do you how do you change that? How do you how do you get that consistency we're all asking for? My first thought was okay, assign one group of refs to work a series every game. Yep. But then inherently in doing so, those referees get to know the players. Yep. They they talk with them. That's a known thing. They communicate all throughout the game. You're going to have to you're going to start developing like bias and I know you're not supposed to you're supposed to be a professional, but it's inevitable. It's going to yep. happen if you're working 7 games. And you got the same guys going at it night after night. You're going to start to look for certain things. You're going to know, oh, I'm going to call uh, this on Jan Ruto when he does this. Or, oh, I'm going to look for uh, Brock Nelson to do this in this situation. So is that a good thing or a bad thing in your mind? Because to me, it's like I think I think you can work around that. And I think the instances would be few and far between enough that – maybe that's the approach that needs to happen because switching the referees in and out yeah you you talk about consistency that doesn't seem like the answer for it i feel like as long as it's the whole series 
but then that same crew can't do the same team the next no season. no yeah Bingo. you know what i mean you gotta like switch it, them around if it's somewhere just else. one series where it's four to seven games i feel like that's not a long enough time where that would be fine but then you get down the road like you get to the stanley cup at some point the best group of officials is going to be doing that same team at some point there's just not enough good refs or the other thing if you're going to alternate the refs have two different crews assigned to a series yep. have them alternate games but have the other crew who's not working that game sit in the back or sit in the arena and watch the game yeah and, and basically have them go through the reps mentally ver uh, verbally and, and visually watching the game and interacting and getting that tv perspective and seeing what we're seeing and, and kind of being able to relate that way and stay up to date with it because i just feel like you bring in another group of refs every different game and i know stuff isn't supposed to carry over momentum everything like that but it does yeah. like there's message sending at the end of games there's uh shots that are that ha there's shots and wax that happen in game one of a series that guys remember in game two or three and get back for so i think there's there are ways to juice up the consistency now the problem with that is there they're unfortunately may not be enough talented and exactly. good enough for lack of better refs to 100%. be able to put two crews on a series yeah. especially in the early rounds when you got 16 teams playing yeah but when you get to the later rounds like the conference final or something i think that's something you could do because this is this seems to be when people start bitching the most because there's that much more yeah, on the line there's more eyes on and the too. consistency is so much different like it's are we going to let them play yeah or are we going to call a stick foul for a guy keeping a stick parallel to somebody's waist like on that uh, that vegas call the other night it was and like it was a joke when there's one game a night you know all eyes are all on that. All eyes exactly. are on You know it. what I mean? And I understand it's not the NFL. It doesn't have the same magnitude as a missed like, pass interference yep. and blown call. But like now, with gambling being legalized in states, now they're getting single-game betting in Canada. Yep. I think that'll. I think that's going to raise a stink in certain eyes. But we all know the NHL is a reactive league. They're not a proactive league. So they'll go and they'll they'll do what you know Major League Baseball is doing with the, the sticky stuff and the pitchers. They'll react instead of being proactive, and they'll fuck it up in some way and somehow yep. and piss everybody off. Uh, back to the actual gameplay on this and the uh, Islanders and uh, Lightning. Braden Point, we were talking about it, 13 goals. He's my pick for Con Smythe. I'm already, like, I'm already thinking the Lightning are past the Islanders. They're in the Stanley Cup. They're going back. They're going to win it. Yep. Kucherov is leading the team in the league in 27 points. What do you value more? 13 goals a lot, yeah. but 27 points a lot. By the time Cooch gets into the finals, he's gonna. Be, you're thinking he's going to be putting up into the 30-point range. Yeah. Like Now, points got 18 points total. 13 of them happen to be goals, though. 13 is a fucking lot. That's like I remember, lot goals. I remember when the Penguins went on the run in 09, Max Talbot had eight goals. Yeah. And from a guy like that, that's a lot. And, and, and say eight goals in any playoff run is a lot. And I'm like, fucking Max Talbot. Like, but Braden Point, point like, has that moment in the Stanley Cup where he gets that big one, like an overtime winner. Then it would, you know what I mean? So yeah, he needs like the signature it goal. It feels like he'll have to get that one that's like, but I, he's I mean, got an OT winner. 30 though, doesn't points. He? In this 30 point, points. I'm pretty sure he's got an OT winner. 30 points is absurd. 13 goals is absurd. And then like what? Obviously, if Tampa wins it, you know, it'll be one of them. But then, I mean, if Montreal wins it, there's only one guy who's going to get it. Carry. Yeah. Carry on. It has to be. <laughs> it has, I mean. Uh, yeah, because you look and like Cole Caulfield is leading rookies in points with eight. And I think he's got three goals. But yeah. like Toffoli is the point leader on Montreal you, with 14. Like, I don't think you're giving it to him. No. Uh, that's, I'm that's looking at like, the goals. Only, like they yeah. don't even have a. They don't even have a goal leader in the top 10 here. <laughs> no. um, yeah, it's like because Carey Price, uh, what's the save percentage? His goals against is 202. Uh, save percentage is 933. Yeah. That's, and what are they, 10, 10 wins out of the last 12 since they lost uh, those couple to the Leafs early on? Yeah, because they've only lost. They swept the Jets and then. And then Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish, to be honest, we're going to have to wrap this up because I wish there was more stuff to talk about, but I feel like all the storylines yeah. are like there, dried up there right There ain't now. nothing to talk about other than getting <laughs> to the Stanley Cup Like, let's just point. get there. Yeah. Uh, could be the last game in the Coliseum. Yeah. You know, like as much as I... I don't know. This I, game, though, would nothing would surprise me, man. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Islanders come out tonight and win one nothing. I will say this. As a Penguins fan, like, 
obviously don't like the Islanders. Yeah. I respect their fans, though, because they're loud yeah. and they're brash and they show up uh, and they know the game. They know the sport. They're not uneducated goofballs like the scumbags in Philly. Yeah. You know? And but, watching what they've done now to the Bruins and yeah. keeping up with the Lightning, it wasn't like the Penguins choked. No. Nah. And you know what I mean? It's like if, if you had a better goalie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, much, yeah. You'd like to think it was a different series, but yeah. you never know. Uh, but like watching them finish out that run in the Coliseum is reminiscent of watching the Penguins do it with the Mellon Arena and like those old barns. There's something about them, yeah. man. The like you're sitting on top of each other. The noise is insane. Like you know they're still gonna try and create a, a state of the art one with their new arena that they're building. I think it's in Belmont Park or something like that in New York. Um, but it's very hard to recreate that atmosphere, and they'll try. But like these new arenas, they're just not. They make them luxurious. It's just and like, like Yankee spectacles. Stadium, dude. Yeah. Like, like new Yankee Stadium. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, the seats are nice. But old Yankee Stadium, like that place popped off. That's why I love what the Red Sox did with Fenway. They just kept yeah. adding on and adding on. And I know it's hard to do that this day and age, but you kind of lose something when you lose a stadium. That's what everyone was saying online that uh, the Montreal Forum, yep. they always talked about the ghosts of the Forum in yep. Montreal. They said some of the ghosts came over to the Bell Center <laughs> when Flurry fumbled that puck <laughs> and, uh, and and tied that game up. But uh, like I said, we'll see. Um, we're both on the Lightning. You're on the uh, you're on the Habs. I came over to the uh, Habs. If we we think if it goes Habs Lightning, we're both on the Lightning. Are, are you going to do? I mean, you I, hold up and do one last stand? I, I You've said, come this far I, with yeah, the boys. I know. I said Lightning, we're going to win the cup you, you when did. we started this. You did. But if we get, I mean, if the Habs get there, I got to go down with the ship. I can't. You know, we've, <laughs> we've come this far with them. I got to die with we them. We all know, though. Like The Lightning should win. You think Lightning, yeah. but you got to ride yeah, with. I will. With Canada's team. How do, yeah. you, how do you feel about that? Everyone's calling them Canada's team. That's what they do every year. They did it when the Canucks made a run, too. It was Canada's yeah. team. It, it, it I feel like a lot of Canadians don't appreciate that. No. <laughs> no. A as lot, much as you'd like to see A lot of Canada cup. doesn't like Canadian teams. Yeah, but as much as you'd like to see the Cup come back to Canada, yeah. like I know Toronto fans aren't fucking happy about Not it. Not at all. Um, that being said, go Bolts. Go Knights, even though they're dead. Go happy at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, we are actually off next week. Pat, uh, shout out to Pat, who uh, is finally taking some time off for himself and gave all the boys some time off. And uh, we're going up to Rhode Island for Ty Schmidt's wedding for the weekend. Shout yes, out to sir. Ty. Uh, getting hitched. Um, and then, uh, so we're not going to have an episode next week. Uh, and the finals will probably start at some point next week. So we'll jump in a little bit later into the game and talk about what we missed and talk about what's going on in the finals. Hopefully we get some more juicy storylines and a little more heat and some some rough stuff to chat about. We'll get AQ back, hopefully. He was on what well, he was on vacation forever. He's, he's traveling. He's, he's, doing roller this, blades, he's doing this. He's fucking rollerblading around his living room. He's rollerblading. He's getting his pool dug out in his yard. It's all these excuses with this Never guy. Never ends. We had Morenci on twice. We got Cam Stewart on. We thought we thought AQ was going to be on this one. It was short notice. We couldn't get anyone, so... Just kidding. We love AQ. We wish him the best, but yeah, nothing but the best, it's, Paul. It's, we want to least, talk to him. At least cut a promo video. Again, we want to talk to the guy. <laughs> but all right, thanks for rocking with us. Uh, you've been doing it all year. We really appreciate you. Follow Hell along on Twitter yeah. at That's Hockey Talk. We'll post all the highlights from the games. Uh, if you enjoy listening to the show, try watching it on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk. We've been putting them up on Saturdays. This one will go up on Thursday. Just it's usually the day after we record it goes up. Shout out to Bill. He he grinds his ass off hey, putting that together Bill. for us. Um can't wait to finish this thing up. Pal. Hoist see that the see cup, that cup my see Lord Stanley get hoisted. Hey, Mario. Yeah, we wish. <laughs> and that's hockey talk. Cheers. <laughs>